Hi there, welcome to my channel. Whether you are new to my channel or have been to my channel before, a really warm welcome to you and I'm excited you are here. So for today's video, I'm really excited because we are going to put everything that we have learned so far in this series together into one working project. And I'm happy to share that the project that I am presenting today in this video is actually part of my own research. And my paper was accepted by one of the conferences where this project, uh, whose this project was part of. So what I'm sharing with you is actually a peer reviewed work. And I will share my paper in the link below once as soon as I have it available. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we have learned in this series so far is to do audio feature extraction using Python, uh, some data augmentation techniques for audio, and then how to prepare data. And then finally, creating a model and then training and testing the model. Once we have the model that is that we are satisfied with, then we use that model for inference. So this is really what the entire project is. Obviously the key is, what kind of features we use and what kind of augmentation and what kind of models, all of these things have a role to play uh, towards the end result. So before I go into the code, into my project, I want to give a little bit of introduction what that project was. So my project was basically uh, to take the sound input from an indoor environment and classify that sound into two categories. So in my case, I wanted to know if, if a person in the house may have fallen down and may need help. So it's, it was basically a fall detection using audios. So that was my project. And that's what I'm going to discuss in the, in the rest of the video. So let's, uh, let me share my uh, code. Before I go into the code, I want to give the overall picture of what the project is. So I will start with the feature extraction. So in my case, uh, again, it's a, a, a your classification problem. So there are several features that we can extract from the audios. And in my project, we tried several different features and I won't go into the details of each one because I will leave that to you. If you're interested, you're free to, you are free to read my paper. But what I will um, focus on is the log ML spectrogram feature since we have discussed that in the previous video. So I think I want to keep the theme and go into the same feature, use the same feature and uh, go through the entire project. So to begin with, we have an audio file. It's a raw WAV file in my case. And then once we read that raw audio file using let's say Librosa, what we get is a 1D vector. And the size of this vector is dependent on the sampling rate that we use to read the audio file using Librosa. So this is just the sampled audio. So once we have the sampled audio, we can extract several different features so one of the features that I used was log null spectrogram. And if you, if you remember from the previous videos, this log null spectrogram is basically a two-dimensional um, two uh, matrix. So on the x-axis, you have, you have the uh, number of melvins and on the y-axis, you, you have the time. So, just want to give one word of caution here. So when you read the audio file using Librosa, I believe what we get is M by T means number of melvins by the uh, time steps. But in my case, I, I flipped it um, because it, 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 that's how it played with my model. So just a word of caution. So this is the transpose of what the uh, Librosa or Python gives us. All right, so in this video, I will focus on one uh, uh, audio feature, which is log mail stack program. So extracting the audio feature is simple. So you take the raw audio and then 
you read it and then you convert into log that's stuff like that. So this is the feature we'll be focusing on. All right, so once we have the feature, then there are several things that I do, such as data augmentation, which I will go in go through in the details. But uh, let me give an overall summary of the model that was used and and uh, classification results. Okay, so just taking one audio sample as a, as an example. So we have the audio raw audio, and then in this case. I extract the logmail spec program. So this input is actually the logmail spec program. So it, it, in this case, it's 2D matrix. And on the y-axis, I have number of time steps. And on the x-axis, I have number of melvins. So this is my logmail spec program. So then in my case, I used the, used the transformer model for doing the classification. So if you have read the transformer model and especially the BERT, you may be familiar with something called the CLS token. The CLS token called the classification token is what we use for classification purposes when we use the transformer. So in my case, uh, this is my feature, logmail spectrogram, and I append this log mail spec program with one with all ones. So this is an additional vector that I append to my log mail spec program. And this vector is my CLS token, so a classification token. Okay, so so what I have so far here is the input plus the CLS token, which is initialized to all ones. So then I do a linear projection. So linear projection, it's basically changing the dimension of the, of the input to a different dimension. So in my case, I change it from uh, n, plus, uh, n plus one by D to, it should actually be n plus one by D model. So it's just a change in dimension. And the reason why I do that, I discuss it in my paper. So here I'm just keeping most of the details out and just trying to show the overall uh, picture. Okay, so then we do the we do the positional embedding. So the reason why I'm glossing over the details of the CLS token, the uh, positional embedding is because that is part of the transformer model. If you if you're familiar with, I'm sure you will understand all of these things. But if you do not know what the transformer model is, I do have videos on my channel. Please feel free to watch those videos and you will have a better sense of uh, why I'm doing things that I'm showing here, such as positional embedding and the CLS token and stuff. Okay, so, so in the transformer, you have two things. You have an encoder and you have a decoder. So in terms of the uh, classification, I only use the encoder part of the transformer model. So basically, I give it the input, so all of this is input. Well, it's not just the raw input, but it's the input with the CLS token and with the positional embedding. So I, I give all of this to my transformer encoder. The transformer encoder encodes the input. And what we get out is a matrix, which is of the same size as the as the input that we give here. So then for the classification purposes, all I do is I take the CLS token, embedding of the CLS token, and I pass it through dense layers. So I use a multi-layer perceptron. And then through after the dense layer, I just do the classification just like we normally do using either softmax or sigmoid in my case, because I just have two classes. So that's the, that's the overall project. And just, just one word of caution here. So here in this project, I will be discussing about the transformer model, but really for the audio classification, you can try many different kinds of models, such as convolution neural networks or 
uh, LSTMs and other combination of these two. So whatever, whatever you like. So in my case, I use the transformer model. So that's why my video will be heavily focused on the transformer model for doing the audio classification. So that was the overall project. Now let me go through into the code line by line. All right. So first things first, we have, I'm using Google Colab because uh, I wanted to use the GPU and I didn't have the processing power on my own computer. So I used Colab. Um, so first of all, we install the uh, libraries that we need, uh, simple stuff, and then we import. And then in my case, the data is stored on my Google Drive. So I load it from my Google Drive and then I read it from there. Okay, so how I have done is, again, this is just how you want to write the code. But what I did was I defined all the functions first and then I called the functions later. So here, what you see is I'm, I'm just defining the functions. So first I define a function to, to define all the augmentations that I want to do. So without going into the details of the augmentations, so these are these are something we have discussed in the in, in my previous video. So uh, these are just a bunch of augmentations such as um, such as stretching the video, uh, stretching the audio, or shrinking it, or cutting it, or masking parts of it. So all of those uh, augmentations that we can do, transformations that we can do to augment the data, right? So that's what I'm defining here, and then. So in my case, my data set was too small. So I had to do several, uh, I had to sev do several transformations to, to make my data size bigger. So now one other thing that I said in my previous video where I discussed about the data augmentation is that when we do the augmentation, we have to be careful that we do not destroy our original data. So that's why in my case, um, so for my two classes in my, cl in my case, the two classes is fall or no fall. So for the no fall, I could do any transformations I, I want. So if that was not a problem, right? Because that's a negative class. But for the fall augmentations, I had to make sure that whatever transformations I do to my audio data, it should still contain the fall event. So, so I, I did less transformations for my fall, uh, fall data, all right? And then, so that was just the definitions of the uh, transformations. And in this function, I apply those uh, augmentations or transformations to my data. And then I verify my augmented data by listening it back in this notebook. All right, so these were just the definitions of the functions. And, uh, uh, and then this is also the definition of the function where I actually read a file one by one from my Google Drive, and then uh, apply augmentations, right? So just the function definition. So nothing fancy here. Okay. All right. So here, so far, I have read the. I uh, so have two classes, fall and no fall, and I've read the fall class, and it contains uh, six eighty four. So I split, uh, first I read it, then I split it into train, validation, and test. So in my case, I had 684, 87, and 84 uh, samples in each of these three subsets. All right. So then I read the no fall audios, same thing. Uh, after I read it and I apply augmentation, then at the end, what I have is I divide into three subsets train, validation, and test. And in my case, I have the number of data points. Each of those is 2826, 356, and 353. So this is, so, so far all I've done is I've read the audio files. I have uh, augmented the uh, data to make the size bigger than what I originally had. And I've also split into test, train, and validation. All right, so that's what I've done so far. So then this is kind of um, 
something that I had to do because of the way I read the files. But what I'm simply doing here is I'm merging the uh, fall and no fall because I ultimately the data that I want to give to the model should contain both fall and no fall. So my X train, X validation, or X test, they should contain the data from both fall and no fall. So, so that's all I'm doing because I read them uh, separately. So here I'm just combining them. All right. So then what I do is the important step, which is to do the padding. So in my case, the original audios were of different lengths. And the model, the transformer model here, cannot take data of varying length. So I have to do either pre padding or post padding or uh, cut my video, uh, cut my audios down to the same length. So in this case, I'm doing post padding. So basically all the shorter audios, they have zeros at the end if they are shorter than whatever the longest video uh, audio is in my data set. So we do the padding here. And then after the padding, the length of my data is 3510. 3510 is the total number of samples in the X screen in this case. And 139767 is the length of each audio uh, data. So that's my data. And then here, I just reshuffle again. So I want to make sure that whatever you feed to the model, it's it's random randomly shuffled. So you have uh, you have both fall and no fall, and they are randomly placed in the data set. So here we're just reshuffling using the shuffle function from the sklearn. All right. So now we have now we have the data that simply has been read from the Google Drive. We have done the augmentation. We have split into test, train, and validation. And we have also reshuffled it. Next, we need to do the feature extraction. So for feature extraction, the feature that I'm going to focus on is the logML spectrogram. So here, the definition is pretty simple. Uh, we learned this, we learned how to do this in the um, very first video in this series, audio feature extraction using Python. So this is just simple Librosa function using Librosa feature ML spectrogram. So what we are going to give it is the sampled audio in this case, because I have already post padded my shorter, uh, shorter audios. So what I'm giving here is the post padded uh, vector, audio vector, right? So then what I get is the ML spectrogram. All right, so then um, here a little bit about masking. So this is also specific to the transformer model. So in my case, because the spectrogram uh, or actually the, the audio vector that I created because I post padded it with zero, I don't want the model to pay any attention to the zeros because that's just nothing there. So for that, we have to do masking. So we have to mask those inputs. We have to tell the transformer model that, hey, this set of input that contains all zeros, you should ignore it when you do the self uh, attention. So that's what masking is. All right. And then again, positional encoding, this is also specific to the transformer. So basically, this positional encoding is um, because when we do the uh, multi head attention, when we, feed that, uh, when we feed the data into the transformer model, uh, we, we don't give it, we don't tell the position of each um, uh, value, right? So when, we, when I give the, uh, when I give the 2D log mail spectrogram, if I don't tell that my first row is the first row, my second row is the second row, then a transformer model wouldn't know what is the relative position of different roles in the log mail spectrogram. And that's kind of important because we are dealing here with the time series data and things happen in, the, in, 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 in a particular order. 
and that's why we do positional encoding. Okay, and then here, uh, again, this is just defining the encoder layer of the transformer and the encoder itself. So then we uh, put it all together. So basically we have the transformer encoder that I showed before. And all of the stuff that I showed in the previous slide here uh, about adding the CLS token, that actually happens inside my function. So inside my class. So in this class, uh, I am, let's look at the call function, right? So in this class, I take the input. So in this case, the input so far is just the raw audio vector that has been post padded with zeros, okay? So then I actually do the feature extraction right here. So Previously, when I talked about the log mass spectrogram here, generate log mass spectrogram, that I, there I was just defining the functions, right? So I was just defining this create log mass spectrograms, but I didn't extract the features there. So feature extraction I do as part of the model. And this is your choice. You can either do the feature extraction beforehand and you can give those features to the model or you can do the feature extraction as part of the models. And that's what I'm doing here. And then once I have the log mass spectrogram, then I add the CLS token. So if we go back here, so I have extracted the log mass spectrogram and then I add the CLS token, which is my, uh, which is initialized to all ones in my case, but you could use a different initializer. Okay, and then I, uh, I tell along with this, along with the input that where you have initialized the CLS token with all ones, I also give the padding mask to the transformer model. So the transformer model gets two things. It gets the input and it also gets the padding mask. So basically the padding mask tells which inputs of this feature, which, sorry, which uh, which sections of this input the transformer should ignore. So that's what the padding mask does, okay? So once we have these two input and the padding mask, we give that to the transformer encoder. And then the transformer encoder does all those fancy things such as multi-head attention. Um, the details are in one of my other videos. So what it gives out is the encoded input, right? So once we have the encoded input, then for the classification, all I do is I take the embedding of the classification token. So just the first, uh, uh, first row from the output of the transformer encoder. And I pass that through a multi-layer perceptron for my final classification. So my final layer, it only contains uh, two units because we have two classes. So then the final classification layer tells me whether the prediction is class zero or class one, class zero being like fall and class one being no fall. So that's really what the project is or the project was. So let me go back again to put everything in perspective. So firstly, we had the raw audios. We read the raw audios using Librosa. And then what we get is the raw audio vector. Then this raw audio vector is post padded with zeros because we want to make sure the all the audio files that we're going to be giving to the model have the same length. So we post pad or pre, you can do pre padding, but in my case, I did the post padding and that's what you see zeros here. So we post pad the shorter audios with zero and then we extract the log mass stack program. And this is the, this is the input that we give to the model. 
However, because I'm doing classification, I append this input with the CLS token. And then I also do, uh, I also add the positional embedding to the input so that we give the positional information to the transformer. And then we pass this to the transformer encoder. And then what we get out is the embedded, uh, sorry, encoded input. And then I take the uh, embedding of the CLS token, pass that through the multilayer perceptron. And what I get is the prediction probability of two classes, right? Fall or no fall. So that was the overall project. Now, one more time, I will go through all of the uh, things that were necessary to get to this is a feature extraction, audio uh, data augmentation, and then data preparation. When I say data preparation, what I really mean here is to extract, um, sorry, to, to uh, do the padding if necessary and to split into test, train, and validation. And then once we have our test set, train set, and validation set, then we can do the model training and testing. And finally, once we're satisfied with the results of our model, then we do the inference. So that is the model, and that is the project in nutshell. And I will paste the link to my paper below if you're interested in more details. And I hope this project uh, was helpful. It may sound as a little abstract, if, uh, maybe. So I, I apologize, but I just wanted to give an example of a real working project uh, that puts everything together that we have learned so far. So with this, thank you for watching my video. And this is the last video in this series. And I hope this was helpful. And if you love the content on this channel, please subscribe. And with that, thank you. And I will see you in the next one.